What up, peeps? Welcome to a pickup video. This one's going to be probably a little bit shorter than most of my normal pickup videos, and that's just because I've been getting less stuff. As you guys probably know, we've been saving up because we are moving our store to a brand new location that is double the size, and that's expensive. We need a lot of new stuff, and so I haven't really been seeking anything out for my personal collection. Basically, everything that I have here is just stuff that happened to get traded into the store, um, with a couple exceptions, but usually in these pickup videos, I have a bunch of games that I picked up from other game stores, maybe a convention, um, stuff that I buy through the mail from people, things that I find at thrift stores, at uh, pawn shops, whatever. Um, but all this stuff here is just coming from my store, so... Like I said, couple exceptions, but it still isn't going to be a short video, so I would still recommend grabbing some sort of drink or a snack, and let's just jump into it. So first up, as always, I'm going to go through all the stuff that's not an actual game. So I have like some promotional items, some accessories, and some stuff like that. So first up, I don't normally show these kind of items when I get them because I, I just kind of get them randomly, and they're really small. And I just have a box that I'm kind of throwing them into, so I usually just throw them in there instead of showing them. But I got these little pins, like, you know, little pins like that. Uh, these are all Kirby ones from Japan. This one. And then we have this one. There's four of them here. We have this one. And I don't think that these are, like, vintage or anything, but they are very cool. And we have this one. Next up, I have a little plushie, and that is this Arceus plush, and this was the pre-order bonus for the North American version of the game. Um, I don't remember exactly from where, but I got this from my friend Scott, who got it when he pre-ordered the game, and as you guys know, I love that game. It's probably my favorite Pokemon game out there, so very cool to get that pre-order bonus, and then kind of in the same vein... I have this, and it's a little stand here, so it kind of sits like that. I also have the original box for the stand, but this card is the Japanese pre-order bonus for the game. You can see it's got the logo for the game printed on the card. This card is still sealed in its little plastic baggie with like the little info card on the back there. So the card was the pre-order bonus for the game. But this little, like, case frame thing was something that you could buy separately. And I got very lucky, found this um, with one of the places that we normally order from, uh, from Japan. They had this little, this little stand, and I thought that that was super cool. I actually got the stand first, and I was like, well, now I have to get the card. Um, so, very, very cool. And I love that game, so I have been kind of trying to collect some Arceus things. I don't necessarily have a spot for them in the game room just yet. But I have my little, my little like glass case over here where it's got four different shelves. The top one's Donkey Kong, then I have Banjo, Pokemon, Mario. I want to get another one at some point, and I definitely want to do one that's Arceus stuff or Pokemon Legends Arceus. I'm going to do a Pikmin one for sure, and uh, so I'm kind of just building things up for that future plan. Next up, I got the Club Nintendo exclusive Game & Watch Ball. This is the Japanese version, so it's got all the Japanese text on the back. So if I do find a North American one at some point, I'll probably replace it, but I just didn't have this one at all yet. Um, I do collect gaming watches, but as with everything else, I try to only do complete in box. So I don't have very many. They are pretty hard to find. Um, so had to hold on to that one. This one's in like basically perfect condition, but I'd prefer to have the North American one. So I'll swap it out at some point. I also have some Japanese exclusive Club Nintendo items. The first one is this. At first, it just looks like a Wii Remote, but... If you look closely, it has a bunch of text on it. This is actually a television remote. This is like a universal remote for your TV, but looks just like the Wii Remote, and this was exclusive to the Japanese Club Nintendo. Very, very cool, weird item. I also got this. And if we open it up here, it is a set of Hanafuda cards. And this one has a black like top and bottom and back to the little box here. I have another one right here. I can grab it. Um, 
I believe that this one is also Japanese, but it came in, came in red. So I'm pretty sure that they're the same, but I was like, man, that is so cool. I, you know, as a collector, I have to get both versions in my collection. So when we got that in and I noticed it was different from the one I already had, I had to keep that. Uh, another little pin set here, Kirby 25th anniversary orchestra concert set. So this one comes in the little box here. And then it's got this like piece of black foam, which is kind of difficult to pull up, but there you go. It's got five pins in there. We did have another one of these that we had out for sale at the store, but I, I'm pretty sure that one already sold. But this is very, very cool. Um, Kirby and the Forgotten Land is a really, really good Switch game. One of the, one of the, well, the first Kirby game I've ever beaten. One of the, <clears throat> one of the only ones I've played, I should say. Um, played a little bit of Kirby 64 and Kirby's Epic Yarn and stuff like that. Never really got too into the Kirby games, but Forgotten Land was really, really good. So picking up a couple different little Kirby things here and there when I can. I also have a controller. This isn't necessarily a new addition to the collection. This is something that we've had for a long time, but it was in Abby's room. Um, I have the game room here. Abby has one of the bedrooms set up with her computer, all her collection and stuff like that. And <clears throat> she had this in there for the longest time. And uh, she was like clearing some room and getting rid of some stuff. Um, some stuff we took to the store and sold PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5 games, stuff like that, a couple controllers, but this one still fits with the collection. So, um, I brought it in here and that is a Dreamcast controller and it is the Sakura Wars, uh, Japanese exclusive. So it's pink. It's got the logo and stuff on here. Uh, pretty cool. And I'm trying to think, we don't have, we don't have the Sakura Wars Dreamcast, I think all my Dreamcast consoles are right there. Uh, we've had one at the store before that would match this controller, but it was too expensive for us to just be like, yeah, we'll just take that home. Um, I think we ended up selling it for a few hundred bucks. So maybe in the future we'll get one for the collection, but we got the controller for now. And then I do have some soundtracks as well. First one, Kefka's Domain, complete, fi complete soundtrack from the Final Fantasy III video game. Pretty awesome. That's the this is the North American one. So Final Fantasy three. What is that? Final Fantasy six. But super cool. And I have some Pokemon ones. This is uh, Pokemon Black two and White two. Pokemon and then <laughs> Alexa, stop. I don't know why she's talking. Um, and then I also have the uh, this is I believe. Um, Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. Uh, it's got the, the three legendaries on the back here. Palkia, Dialga, and Giratina. And then it's got Arceus on the front. Um, but yeah, this is 2009. Whoop, and I dropped it on the couch. Then we have the Pokemon Red and Green and Blue soundtrack. So it's a double disc one, and then it also has all these, like, stickers, which I can't read them, but they're all numbered out of 150, so I imagine it's one sticker per per Pokemon for those games, but that is super, super cool. The last CD soundtrack is Zelda A Link Between Worlds. I believe this was a Club Nintendo one, I can't remember. Yeah, it's got the little Club Nintendo logo down here. Uh, Japan, obviously super cool the last soundtrack though is a cassette and this was traded into the store and i have this on cd already which i found factory sealed at a goodwill for one dollar long time ago but now i have the cassette version and it just so happens to be for my number one favorite game of all time super mario 64 that thing is super super cool and this is like a 200 dollar soundtrack or, or something crazy um when we got this in, there was nothing on eBay, I believe, so we used Discogs, which is a information and buying selling platform for all music related stuff. Um, so on there, we could see that there was a few sold um, around 200 bucks, which is pretty crazy, but I'm very, very happy to have that in the collection. I think it's super, super cool. And then I have three consoles to show you guys. The first one, 
this is actually a console that I've had the box for for a very long time, um, but I didn't have the actual console, and that is for the Fire Orange N64. So this got traded in at the store, and I was like, man, I've been waiting for one of these to come in because, like I said, I have the box, and I believe I only... Because I have all of the Fantastic N64 boxes, but I was missing some of the consoles. So I think now the only one that I'm missing, I think, is the gray purple. Maybe the smoke. I can't remember, but I definitely have definitely have watermelon, jungle green, and ice blue. And then I have the uh the Donkey Kong jungle green one as well. Um I've got like the Pikachu console. I've got a couple different regular console bundles and like some Japanese ones, but as far as the Fantastic ones go, I'm pretty sure after this Fire Orange, I only needed one or two more. Um, just the console, like I said, I already have the boxes. Along with that, I also got the instruction booklet for the console. I don't know if the Fire Orange one needed it, but I know that at least one of my boxes needed it, so that's just to complete one of those. And then two other consoles here. I'm going to show you the Japanese one first, even though this one is probably way more unique and interesting. I think that the one I'm going to save for after is a little bit cooler in my opinion, but this is, I believe, I'm pretty sure this is another Soccer Wars console, and it is a clear pink Game Boy Color that comes bundled with a game, Japanese exclusive. I don't know if it comes with that. I don't think it does. I'm pretty sure that's sold separately. Um, but very, very cool. And yeah, it comes in like this box protector, but I'm pretty sure this is original because it fits everything perfectly and it has this like, like this cardboard here is connected to the piece that goes along the back. And so I'm pretty sure this little uh, plastic case thing was original to it, which is really, really cool. Keeps it nice and protected. And then the last console is another handheld, and it is a blue Game Boy Pocket. Seems pretty normal, but this is a Toys R Us exclusive that includes Tetris Attack. Which is really, really cool. They do all sorts of different um, game bundles for handheld consoles. Some of them being store exclusives, and I think that that is just awesome. So, here's the Game Boy itself in beautiful condition. It's got the game in there. Uh, we have the paperwork for the game looks like we're missing the paperwork for the actual console but one other thing it's got the original batteries in here which are not corroded and they are also fully sealed in plastic there's no little hole there's no rip which is the only reason why i decided to leave this in here if it was corroded i would throw them out um, but the fact that they're not corroded but also the fact that they are completely sealed in plastic makes me fairly comfortable that they're probably going to be fine corrosion could obviously eat through plastic but i think it's going to be all right and if it ever starts to corrode or whatever then obviously i will throw them out but i just think it's kind of cool you guys might think that i'm taking a big risk by leaving them in there but that's fine so oh one more thing <laughs> this one's really funny I, I'm pretty sure I found this at Goodwill, and it's just been in my car for a long time. But I did intend to keep it, and that is the Ninja Turtles Wilton Cake Pan. <laughs> it's got the original paper in here, so you can use this to make a cake that'll look like Michelangelo. And the reason I decided to keep this is because this is a little expensive. Um, it'd be a good thing to sell on eBay, but I already have the Mario Cake Pan and the Pikachu Cake Pan. Uh, my Mario one has the paper, the Pikachu does not, but I'm like, it's so perfect, I gotta add this to my cake pan collection. <laughs> so, kinda cool. And that is everything that's not an actual game, or, there, I mean, there's a couple manuals and stuff like that, but getting into the bulk, we have a, and this is kinda how it is for every pickup video, we have a bunch of Nintendo Switch games. Like I said, the majority of what I have picked up has come from the store. And that's not necessarily just stuff that was traded in. That is new release games that we get as well. So whenever we make a wholesale order for Nintendo Switch games, I always order an extra one to keep. I do it with every single game. So typically, we, if it's like a popular game, we'll order 
10, 15, 20, up to like 100 copies for like a Mario or a Zelda or a Pokemon. If it's a game that like is kind of popular, but like not triple A or not like first party Nintendo, if it's like an Ace Attorney game or if it's like, uh, I don't know, like something like that, then we typically will order five copies for the store. So I'll order six of them so I can have one. But for most Nintendo Switch games, for just random stuff, we will order four copies so that I get one and then the store has three. So that's usually how we end up doing it. So most of these games, a couple of them have come from trade-ins, but most of them, especially the sealed ones, were new releases or games we got from distri from distribution. So first up is Mario vs. Donkey Kong. Excuse me. <clears throat> Mario vs. Donkey Kong. And I played about an hour of this one so far. It's pretty fun. I never played the original and I'm not much into handheld gaming. So the fact that they have been remaking some older handheld games on the Switch is really, really cool because it gives me an excuse to actually play them. And I really like the game so far. I think I'm on World 2 and I've 100 percented it so far, which has been very easy to do. But it's a pretty fun game. Looking forward to playing some more. Next, we have Return to Monkey Island. I think Colton traded this one in, but it's got a uh, manual and everything in there, which is always cool. Then we have Jujutsu Kaisen Cursed Clash. We have DC Justice League Cosmic Chaos. World of Final Fantasy Maxima. This one is Kojin Sword of Rewind and Gunvolt Chronicles Luminous Avenger 9-2. It's like a double pack. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Radiant Silver Gun. This is, I don't know which like edition this is, but it comes in a box with a uh, steel book in there. We have Under Night In Birth 2. We have Greek Memories of Azure. That one looks really cool. Another Code Recollection. Ace Attorney, or Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy. Nickelodeon Kart Racers 2 Grand Prix. Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition. Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition. So with a game like this, or the, the uh, I think the, maybe the Radiant Silver Gun, I can't remember. Um, this is a game that like, I already have the special edition for, like the, the big box one. But I just didn't have this like standard version, so I am trying to get all the versions, at least the ones that were released in North America. Um, but I am getting rid of all my factory sealed copies. So uh, this next one is Cartoon Network Battle Crashers. Let's just say that I had a sealed copy of this on the shelf. I would be pulling that off to sell at the store and replacing it with this one. I've already done that for all the games that I had, that we had open copies of at the store. Um, so I'm still, it's it's a process that'll take forever, right? Because uh, I'm not necessarily looking for complete copies of games I already have. It's just, if I happen to notice it, then I will swap them out. Next is Arkanoid Eternal Battle. This one looks really fun. This is the Boulder Dash 30th Anniversary and Boulder Dash Deluxe double pack. Love me some puzzle games. And then, okay, so this is one of those cases where I am swapping out a game for a sealed one. That is Tricky Towers Collector's Edition. And the reason is because this is a Super Rare Games game, and it's a uh, European or PAL. And I am actually not collecting PAL games anymore. I'm not going after Japanese imports or Play Asia games or anything like that. I'm just going after the North American games. But I do have a bunch of PAL games and a bunch of Japanese games already. So I'm not gonna get rid of the ones I have. I'm just not getting more of them. But this is one that I only had sealed, so I'm replacing it with the complete one. Also, uh, I think I think this is the one. Ryan just really liked this game. Looks cool. And then lastly for Switch, we have Cobra Kai 2 Dojo's Rising. So no like crazy big box ones this time, but probably in the next. I have one NES game, which is just a cartridge that I already have the box manual for, and that is Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. This is the Mindscape version. I believe the other one, I can't remember if it's Ubisoft or Natsume or something like that, but there's two different like versions of the game. So this is the one I have the box for. 
Also, one game for the Wii U. This is another one where I'm swapping it. I have a sealed copy, which I'm selling, and I'm keeping the complete one. That is Runbow Deluxe Edition. And actually, before I forget, there's a little code here to download the soundtrack. And that was in this copy. I brought that little paper home to see if my copy needed it. That's when I realized my copy was sealed. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to bring home the complete one then. But I left the paper here. So it was sitting there. I saw it earlier before I started filming. So I put it in here. So this is now fully complete again. Um, we are getting kind of close to the end. I have two Game Boy games here. First one is GBA. This is a complete copy of Superman Returns, Fortress of Solitude. Nothing too special. The other one here is a, I believe this is a PAL exclusive. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure it is though, because that's the only reason I would have kept it. And it's called The Fish Files for the Game Boy Color. Um, so <clears throat> it doesn't have any SRB rating on the front. And then it's got like this on the side, which is not on, and this kind of stuff. It's Those are not on the North American games. I'm pretty sure when I looked it up that this was a PAL exclusive. I'm pretty sure. Because I wouldn't have kept it if this game came out here. I would just get the North American copy. So, pretty cool. I have PS1, 3DS, Super Nintendo, and N64 remaining. Uh, so, let's go with 3DS because I only have two games here. The first one is the Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate Collector's Edition. Comes in a big box here with a little figure. This one is actually missing the game. And... Like, it's missing the game and the plastic case for the game. And it was something that I didn't realize when I agreed to buy this from my from my buddy. Um, the case for the game says not for resale where the barcode is supposed to be. So I can't just replace it with a normal case. So I'm on the lookout for the Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate case that says not for resale on it. If any of you guys have that case, I don't need the cartridge. Just that plastic case with, like, the manuals and paperwork and stuff. If you have one... Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to buy one. And then the only other 3DS game I also got from my buddy Scott, and that is the Shakedown Hawaii Collector's Edition. Comes with the little figure, and then the game is in the back here. Very, very cool. And of course, Zelda is right here. Hi, kitten. You guys want to say hello? Uh, say hello to Zelda. Hi, Zelda. <laughs> All right, moving on. Let's go to PS1. I want to save Super and N64 for last. So just some random games here that just don't see very often. Those are the kind of games that I, I do try to add to my PS1 collection when they come into the store. If it's a game that I've seen a bunch of times, maybe I have it, maybe I don't. But if I see it all the time, I'm not too worried about adding it to the collection right then and there because I see it all the time. And once I'm focusing on PS1, that'll be a different story. I'll probably be keeping every game that comes in I don't have. But the games I am adding to my PS1 collection right now are the games that I've either, one, never heard of or never seen before, or they're games that I know are a little bit more uncommon or rare, stuff that will be harder to track down in the future. So that's kind of what these are. None of these, I, only one of them I would say is particularly rare. The other ones are just uncommon ones I don't see very often. First one being ATV Mania. And this is like a $5 game, so this might be one that some of you guys are like, man, my local store has five copies of that game. We've never had this traded in at the store, and I don't think I've ever seen it or heard of it, so had to keep it. Also, we have N2O Nitrous Oxide. And Red Asphalt. This one's kind of funny because Ryan and Jess traded this in, and they traded it in on a day that I wasn't there. Or it got processed on a day that I wasn't there. And then I was going through and setting up the trades to film at the store. And I was like, ooh, never really seen that game. I want it. And then Jess saw that I was ke keeping it. And she's like, oh, I wish you would have told me you needed that one. I would have just given it to you. And I was like, nah, we would have paid for it anyway. So kind of cool that it came from their collection into mine. Another one I got from my friend Scott is Bass Landing for the PS1. But it comes with the uh, fishing controller which is kind of interesting. What's weird is that this is the manual for the game. It's, and the, the case is behind it. The manual is too thick to fit into the case. And then in the actual jewel case, there's like a, just like a paper slip cover 
for the for the the cover art of the game. So really weird because anytime you have a super thick manual for a PS1 game, they usually put it into a double case, even if it's a single disc game. But for some reason, they didn't do that here, and they just have the manual in front of the jewel case. Very weird. Um, this box is also not in the best condition, but I can't really complain too much. This is a bundle that I don't really see very often. You actually don't see too many bundles with accessories for PS1 anyway, so that one's kind of cool. And then the last one, which is the one that's maybe considered kind of rare, um, is I just believe it's the last Mega Man game that I didn't have for uh, PS1 or PS2, and that is Mega Man Legends 2. So, got both of them now. All right, so moving on, we're going to do N64 first and then Super Nintendo. And you might be asking, why or how are you adding N64 games to your collection? Because as you guys may or may not know, I do have the full North American library. I have every game, every box, every manual. But there are some variants that I'm missing. There are some other things that I'm missing. This is the first one, and it's just a manual for Majora's Mask. So the story behind this is that I had a complete copy of the non-collector's edition, and then for my collector's edition version of the game, I had a factory sealed copy that I had graded through VGA many, many years ago, and I sold it because I was getting rid of like my sealed stuff, and I, I was not thinking, looking at the shelf, being like, okay, I have my, my Majora's Mask here, and then I have the sealed one, I'm just going to get rid of the sealed one. I didn't realize that when I did that, I kind of split up my full set because the sealed one was the collector's edition. The one on the shelf was the non-collector's edition. So I was like, dang it, now I need to get a complete copy of the collector's edition, which luckily is the more common version, the one with the holla, the like lenticular label. So I ended up getting a box. I think someone traded it in like months ago and I just got a nice condition cartridge when it came in but I still didn't have a manual. So we got a complete copy traded in recently and I snagged the manual to complete mine again. Um, so that one's fine. Um, and then I have a player's choice game here, which I did not have, and that is Star Wars Rogue Squadron. So my collection consists of one of every game. Some of them may be player's choice. Some of them are gonna be the original release but I am going after all of the player's choice variants as well. So I have like GoldenEye and Mario 64, Ocarina of Time. There's a, there's a handful of them. This is just one that I did not have yet. So I'm holding on to that. And then the last N64 thing here is not a game. Kind of looks like one, but this is actually something that I bought off of eBay. I pieced it together from two separate listings and I didn't really spend any money on this. I just used my eBay funds which is the money that I get when I sell stuff on eBay. So the way that I like to look at it is that I found some stuff at the Goodwill outlet, some people might call trash, and I sold it on eBay, used that money to buy this. So I essentially traded some time for this, and that is this. So Glover is a very fun game that was released on N64, PS1, maybe Dreamcast, I can't remember. Um, but it's a really fun game that I rented a lot when I was a kid. You play as a glove and you have a ball. The controls are really hard to get used to, but once you get used to them, it's very, very fun. But it's kind of like a puzzle platform game, but it is fully 3D. And this is a t-shirt. And it comes in a box that looks like an N64 box. And this was from Target. So this wasn't a pre-order bonus. This was basically, if you buy this, um... I guess I don't know how much they were, but if you buy this, you get 10 bucks off the game. So almost like a pre-order bonus, but you have to pay for it, I guess. Um, so I'm in a Facebook group for vintage and retro video game related clothing items. And somebody had posted the Glover t-shirt for like 120 bucks or something like that. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. I knew that there was a t-shirt, but I'm not really into collecting video game related t-shirts too much and but when I saw that one I was like oh that's really cool and that's cheaper than what I expected it to be because a lot of video game t-shirts especially from N64 era and before can be hundreds and hundreds of dollars and so I went to look on eBay and I saw the t-shirt I'm pretty sure the same guy that was trying to sell it in the group but I think 
he had best offer on it or something. I think I offered, I can't remember what I offered, but it ended up being like a hundred bucks for the t-shirt. And then there was a different seller who had the original box and the little coupons inside listed without the t-shirt. Now, the box was kind of expensive. I believe it was like 215 bucks or so, but to get it fully complete like this, and it has two coupons inside, not one. I'm not sure if they always came like that, but to get the complete set like this for basically trading garbage I found at the outlet, I think is worth it. Maybe it was a little bit more than they normally go for. I don't know. You can't really find sales history on something like this, but I'm very happy with it. I think it's super cool and it fits in very well with my complete N64 library. Love collecting stuff like this. All these different like store exclusive things are very cool in my opinion. So lastly, we have Super Nintendo. And as you guys know, Super Nintendo is the console that I am currently focusing on trying to go for a complete setup. I, with the addition of this game here, I have exactly 100 games left for the full North American library complete in box. Now, I am, and I should say, I'm missing one box because I do have some boxes that are missing cartridges. I'm missing some manuals here and there. I think about 20, 25, 30 manuals total I'm missing um, for boxes I already have. So I guess I need about 130 manuals. Um, and I'm missing a handful of cartridges, but... The hardest part to find are the boxes and the manuals. So if I can find those, I'm willing to track down a cartridge later on. So I'm 100 boxes away from the full set with the addition of this one. But before I show you that, I do have one manual that I'm adding to the collection. That is for Spawn the video game. So already have the box for this one. Let me see if I can spot it. Yes, it is right here. Bam. So I can feel there's no cartridge in here. So I also need the cartridge for this one. But like I said, the cartridges are the easy parts to find. So I'm not too worried about trying to track one of those down. Oh, and look at that. It has the poster. So now we have the manual and the poster. I have a couple of these sitting here. Precautions booklet. Got to put that with it. So now... And it looks like it has a third-party tray. but So I just need the cartridge now to complete this one. And I'll be set. So this is not a particularly hard cartridge to find. I will definitely find one in the future. I'm not worried about that. And the second thing I have to show you is a cartridge for a box. And that is for Contra 3. Seems like one that I probably should have had already, right? But it just... The box that I found didn't come with the cartridge so now i have it here and i'm putting these away on camera for no reason but i normally just film my pickup videos and then i do this directly afterwards uh there's no cardboard insert but it looks like we do have the manual nintendo power insert poster uh registration card and the precautions booklet so that's probably everything that originally comes in this um, do I have a cardboard insert, though, is the question. I don't think so. I have a tub behind my little Nintendo glass case here with a bunch of box protectors and cardboard inserts and all that kind of stuff. So, game goes in here. I will add a cardboard insert at some point later, but very happy to get the cartridge for that one. This is not a super cheap game, um, to get complete in box, so very happy with that. But, the big boy... The one to finish off the video here. This is one of the most expensive Super Nintendo games I still needed for my collection. Most of the ones I need are not cheap. There's a couple sports games here. There are a couple like racing games and stuff like that that are, you know, price charting maybe has them at like 40, 50 bucks, something like that. But this game is like six to eight hundred dollars. And I'm very glad that I was able to get this. Someone traded this into the store in a big bundle with a bunch of other complete in box games that they just had in their garage. So they did not expect to get a ton of money for them. They knew that they were going to be good, but I don't think they, they knew that the original cardboard added so much value. So um, the bundle that they traded in was pretty awesome. They got a ton and they, they wanted store credit. So I think they picked up like a Switch and 
some games they have a ton of credit left over like they <laughs> they probably are in the top five people with the most store credit at our store now but this was one of them that I needed it was the only one out of the bundle that I did not have and I'm super super happy to have this game because this is one that I had in my collection before when I lived in Florida and when I sold everything this is one of those games that I was like man it's going to be really hard to get this one back because number one it's very expensive number two it's very desirable it's a very popular franchise and game so um when people do get this game they usually either don't want to sell it or it's extremely expensive or they're just in really really bad condition which is how my previous copy was when i lived in florida so this one's not perfect but it's way better i'm going to take it out of the protector so i can show you to you without the glare but this is a complete copy of harvest moon very very happy to get this like i said not in the best condition it's got a little crease here it's kind of like bowed out a little bit there same with the bottom got some creasing there's uh, some red marker over the barcode here but overall this is 10 times better than my previous copy the one i had in florida looked like it was left out on the road and a bunch of cars drove over it and then someone put it into a box protector to hold its shape it was really really bad all the corners and edges were super worn, um, covered in scratches, all that kind of stuff. So this is a very nice one compared to that. And I'm super, super happy to have this. I really enjoy Harvest Moon on the N64. I've never played this one. So I love the graphics. It just looks like Stardew Valley, right? So I will probably give that a shot at some point. But that is everything that I have for this pickup video, guys. So with that one, we're down to exactly 100 Super Nintendo games remaining for the full set and we'll see how quickly I can kind of complete that my goal was to try to complete the set by the end of 2023 that obviously did not happen some of the games I need are incredibly hard to find even if you have the money to spend on them you can't find some of these games like Rex Ronin um there's a uh, what's the other one Packy and Marlin uh Three Ninjas Kickback stuff like that very very hard to find but there are a couple conventions this year that I'm going to be going to. Southeast Game Exchange in South Carolina in July, I'm going to. Uh, Portland Retro Gaming Expo, obviously. And uh, we'll see if there's any others that, uh, that want to invite me out. That'd be cool. But for now, it's those two for sure. And while I'm more focused on the store right now because we're moving to our new location, we have a lot of new stuff to purchase for that. But I can't help but look for Super Nintendo games if I have the opportunity to do so. It's easy when I'm here at home and working to just go to work, go home, go to work, go home, go to Goodwills or whatever, but it's it's pretty easy to avoid going to the other game stores and buying stuff for my collection. But when we're at a convention, it's very, very hard to resist. So while I maybe won't finish the set this year because the store obviously takes priority over my collection, I do think that I will at least add a few more games this year Hopefully a decent amount. We'll see. But thank you guys for watching this pickup video. I really hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.